ओम सहना सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर्यंकवाहै तेजस्वीतमस्तुमाषावै ओ शातिशाति we are on verse number 68 i think pakshavabhyasya pakshi janayati marutam tena yatyuchya desham labdhva vayum mahantam shramam apanayati sviya paksha uprasarya दुस्संकल्पैर्विकल्पैर्विषयमुकदर्थीत चिमेत खिन्न विश्राम हेतु स्वपति चिमहो हस्तपादान प्रसार्य अगे वी आर् कंटिन्ूइंग वित् डिस्कशन ऑफ दि स्लीप स्टेट एंड एज ई हेव मेन्शन बिफोर स्लीप स्टेट इज वेरी वेरी डियर टू आल because it is being one with oneself and it is akin to moksha except you are not there to enjoy it in real time that's the only difference it is very close to moksha and even if you don't have moksha as i have pointed out before other people have moksha from you when you sleep Okay, so that for for all all these reasons, sleep is extremely important, and the uh, the Vedanta scholars they they have plumbed and mined the sleep state to to eke out of it all the knowledge that they can get in order to shed light on on the concept. of atmananda so what is this atmananda and this swarupananda and that is something which is so effortlessly gained in the sleep state and so this author also of the shat shloki goes on the same vein but in addition he also uses the sleep state to to talk about how the ananda which is the swarupa of the atma is gained so effortlessly compared to the amount of effort you have to put in the jagriti the jagrat avastha in the waking state you have to put so much effort to fulfill even a tiny little desire because nothing goes in in your own way and especially you know in india there is uh, at least in other western countries there is a semblance of control over one's life but you go to places like india which i think are made uh, are are made in this way only for the purposes of overcoming raga dvesha and uh, giving vairagya because the only law that prevails in places like india is murphy's law what is murphy's law <laughs> whatever can go wrong will go wrong definitely whatever you you know and so living here you know first of all coming being born here is a great blessing because right from childhood one is trained that uh, to to know that raga and dvesha do not really uh, you know have a say and so one is trained and well adjusted for any disappointment and the second thing which is a blessing here even if you do, are not born and bred here even if you come here then you, one gets one gets into a spiritual boot camp one gets into a place of uh, you know some kind of a training where the where the recalcitrant binding and unmanageable desires are are tame nothing goes your way you go to a restaurant and order something something else completely comes and the whole concept of sending it back is not there at least until recently it wasn't there so you just say okay today it is my karma to eat this 
you know, I wanted dosas, but I got idlis, uh, fact, factoid number one. Factoid number two, I hate idlis. So, but I have to eat this because this is what has come. Because, you know, let's say you're going on a pilgrimage from one place to another and then you just stop for some breakfast or something and there's always some deadline, you have to catch the bus, catch the train and there's no time and it's not worth, this is more important, it's not worth getting into an argument and then so you just eat whatever is there. Similarly, you know, everything. You just do whatever presents itself, you do. And so in this, uh, you know, so in this way, the Ragadveshas are, are already tamed. And so, they, so the author here is making a contrast. Even in the last uh, verse, we saw this contrast. What is the contrast between the, the, the person and the fulfillment of the desires? There is a very big if series of ifs, series of things out of one's hands, out of one's control, completely. You know, many slips between cups and lips, that is what it is. So therefore, what does one do? One, one learns to drop it, but it takes some time. So in the beginning, in the waking state, uh, the, the, for everybody, the waking state is, de is defined by a frenetic activity or series of activities in order to get something or in order to lose something that one has already got. Compare that and all for what? I mean, nobody is, you know, pursuing something, an object of desire for the sake of chocolate cake. No, the chocolate cake symbolizes happiness. So therefore, and nobody is pursuing money, you know, for the sake of money. Money symbolizes security. So in this way, the Arthakama pursuits, they are all, you know, they are all very much uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, you know, in, in the mix because that is what drives one for sense objects. Because the sense objects are not pursued for their own sake. They are pursued for the sake of some potential gratification they can give provided you get what you are after. So the frenetic activity is all for the sake of happiness. You know, the marriage is for the sake of happiness. Children, at least until they are teenagers, are for the sake of happiness. And then what else? You know, they, then uh, anything, job, is for the sake of satisfaction. That's why we have the expression job satisfaction. Money in the bank is for the sake of security. And what else? You know, all other friendships, relationships and other things that one pursues on a on an esoteric level, like you know you want to do a course. Why? Because you want to challenge yourself. Why? Because you want to be up on everything. Why? So that I can be satisfied. Everything is for the sake of the satisfaction centered on the self already. And the self is already satisfied. How do we know? Go to sleep. Not right now, okay? Yeah, so when you go to sleep, <laughs> after the class you can go to sleep. When you go to sleep, you understand that everything is for the sake of this, that, this happiness alone, which ironically already belongs to me. So then why the sense uh, organs, then why the objects of the senses? That is only gives what is called a contact high. So you go there, you, uh, you enjoy it. And when you enjoy it, what com com comes out is yourself as enjoyment personified, as enjoyment embodied. Then why do you need that other thing in order to bring this out? Because of self-ignorance, one is not able to understand that I generate my own happiness. In fact, you don't even generate it, it is there. It is there. Just like the story of the dog and the bone. The dog gets a dry bone, sits and enjoys it, and then uh, the sharp edges of the bone uh, scrape the gums of the dog, poor thing, and it starts to bleed. But then the dog slurps up the blood and says, what a juicy bone I have got today. The juice 
doesn't come from the dog sorry from the bone it belongs to the, the the juice belongs to the dog not to the bone the bone is just an excuse a nimitta for this thing to come out so this is a classic example and in fact that juice one seeks is the atma alone says the taittiriya upanishad raso vai sah rasagghye vayam labdhva nandi bhavati raso vai sah this indeed is the juiciest thing this atma and it has the, the, the essence of happiness is right here atma means i is right here you don't have to go anywhere you don't have to pursue anything because ironically even after you pursue some things frenetically what happens exhaustion ensues and then what happens you promptly go to sleep and then you find that everything that you have tried to collect you are not even able to enjoy and uh, and the, the effortless enjoyment that comes from sleep is the lakshana lakshana means is the metaphor for swarupa ananda the ananda that is centered on you so here the sleep state is used in this particular way to contrast the effortlessness of sleep and the 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 frenetic pursuits of the waking state and how in sleep the happiness is is gained effortlessly whereas you have to put a lot of effort and you have to wait for the results of action which may be conducive to you or which may be unfavorable to you you do not know and so it there is a lot of ifs and buts in the waking state trying to quote and quote generate the happiness that verily belongs to you and then the second contrast between the sleep state and the waking state is that all the effort that you have put to keep unhappiness and discomfort at bay number 1 and then to generate some happiness number 2 all that effort what has happened to that you know it has gone to waste all that has gone to waste why because after even after becoming successful and gaining everything that you wanted at least for today then what happens you say i'm too tired i want to go to sleep oh but you have achieved so much yeah but that has tired me out so in this way these are the contrasts that that have been talked about very very beautifully and so uh, and that already was addressed in verse number 67 and it is a theme that is going to be uh continued in verse number um, what is that called verse number uh, 68 and what is that theme very nice theme and here the uh, another example from the brihadaranyaka upanishad and uh, we'll see that later but let us look at the verse now pakshau abhyasya abhyasa means repetition abhyasya having repeated repeated means flapped having repeatedly flapped what pakshau pakshau means two wings that's how the word pakshi comes pakshah no pakshau asya asti iti pakshi that pakshi means the one that has wings so pakshau abhyasya pakshi so the pakshi the bird having repeatedly flapped its wings because that's how it takes off when it takes off what does it have to do it just has to flap the wings very very hard and then what happens marutam janayati very simple sanskrit for a change we don't expect this of shatha shloki but <laughs> let us enjoy it marutam janayati marutam wind janayati generates it produces this kind of a momentum in the form of by flapping its wings it produces a uh, you know it it generates the it generates the air moves the air around and then then with the help of that yati soars where uchcha desham into high quarters soars off into high quarters this is an example everybody can relate to is it not 
you have seen the bird take flight and in the beginning it has to flap 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 and then it gains momentum that's the next line it gains momentum and then it just begins to soar because it catches the current and the birds are very very intelligent they know how the current blows and this is how they time their migration because otherwise how will a bird go 3000 miles with a small little bird with its wings it catches hold of the favorable currents so that it has to use the wings as little as possible so it can just migrate soaring on the whatever current is there and then that's how it reaches the destination that's how it comes back because otherwise if it had to just flap 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 nobody no bird would migrate so birds migrate because they have and they always do it in groups because they catch the tail wind that's why it's called tail wind whereas if you are in a opposite current even if you walk on a windy day uh, what happens if the wind is against you you can't walk very fast but if the wind is behind you it it helps you to walk so same same thing with the air there are so many kinds of currents there are different kinds of currents and without studying geography the birds know <laughs> when to stop when to start all these things and so pakshav abhyasya so of course in the beginning to catch hold of that current you have to put a little bit of an effort a lot of effort and then it flaps 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 and then reaches a height yati uchcha desham and then what what does it do labdhva vayum mahantam labdhva having gained vayum the wind uh, here wind must must be uh, seen as uh, the current the air current so having gained the conducive air current mahantam means a huge current that is uh, able to carry it shramam apanayati apanayati removes removes what shramam you know relieves its efforts relieves itself of the tiredness of its efforts shramam also means tiredness exhaustion relieves its exhaustion what was the exhaustion the exhaustion of having repeatedly to generate a momentum in order to catch the current somewhere above and uh, be become part and one with that current it had to put a lot of effort and that effort here you know is shamam apanayati apanayati means removes release relieves itself of its exhaustion how swiya pakshau prasarya prasarya having spread swiya its own pakshau wings so having spread its own wings it rides the coat tail of the currents and enjoys itself and you can see that it plays with the current it swoops down pretends to swoop down it goes up and then it just does a little somersault and it shows off its uh, its soaring skills you find that with eagles etc which have a big wingspan we very fascinating to see them and it sometimes it circles sometimes it spirals and sometimes it you know flips very rarely like in that's how all these rocket uh, shows and these air shows have uh, you know have uh, copied from the birds themselves and we find this same thing happening even if you catch a flight in the beginning lots of fuel lots of momentum and yes the plane might not be flapping its wings but there are certain things that open little if you are sitting near the wind uh, window where the wings are you see certain portions open and then they come back to generate this momentum and once it is generated it too can soar for a bit that's how the planes also functions they let the air do the job and that's why the sometimes the pilot will make an announcement we have a very favorable wind at our tail we have a favorable what is it called tail wind and then because of that we will be reaching our destination 15 minutes early <laughs> because the wind is carrying us so and of course 15 minutes 10 minutes is not a big deal but everybody gets happy because everybody is in a rush 
and so so this is uh, this is you know this is what is called the tail wind and all this we learned from the wisdom of the birds without doing a degree in aeronautical engineering the bird already knows which <laughs> which uh, wind to catch and when to rest and so this way the bird is Uh, the bird is very much uh, uh, what's that you know the the bird is very much in keeping with the natural order of the uh, of the way the wind blows and then so this is the example the first two lines typical you know typical construction the first two lines are is the example constitute the example what is, what is the example called in sanskrit drishtanta and then the other two lines are darshtanta what is exemplified so dukha sankalpaihi vikalpaihi dukha sankalpaihi vikalpaihi vishayam anu vishayam anu so dukha sankalpaihi vikalpaihi vishayam anu anu means going after vishayam anu so pursuing what vishaya in keeping with the vishayas vishaya means what objects vishinoti badnati iti vishayaha that which binds the sanskrit definition of objects objects that delight the senses is immediately seen as that which binds vishayam ano going in keeping with the vishaya in other words pursuing the objects that potentially delight the senses how dussankalpaihi through wrong sankalpas <laughs> sankalpa means um how to translate sankalpa a wish a an intent a better translation is intention so dussankalpa means a wrong intention who are you to tell me that my intention is wrong <laughs> well you can of course you are free you know it's a free country and you are free to pursue whatever you want but then why is it wrong <laughs> it is wrong because it the no matter what you pursue its end result is uh, dukha that's why it is called dussankalpa the intent that leads to sorrow because behind the action is the intent and if every intent that you make uh, if uh, uh, leads you to sorrow then it is something to be examined is it not so like the bird flapping its wings you are flapping the hands and legs uh, in order to gain some momentum in life reach somewhere reach somewhere get something you don't have get something you don't have and then what else you know get rid of something that you already have that you don't want starting with wrinkles etc and that is what it is and so wrinkles are there which you don't want and then what else um extra weight is there that you don't want gray hairs are there that you don't want and then what else old age is there that you don't want so the whole life is about keeping at bay what you do think you don't want and then trying to invite what you want more youthfulness you want more flexibility in the limbs you want and then uh, you know of course without exercising i have to i have to you know talk about that <laughs> without doing yoga i should be like a 6 month old baby that is able to suck its own toe without any problems <laughs> so so without doing the yoga without taking a walk i should be lithe and ready to jump and ready to do this this is what you know this is these are all the sankalpas and then if you you know if somebody is contentious and say what's wrong we could be trying to keep the body okay nothing wrong in fact you have to keep the body subtle supple and then you have to so that you know it becomes a it it becomes a fitting vehicle to really gain what you want which is freedom from wanting all together
even to sit for class without squirming requires a certain flexibility <laughs> requires a certain uh, you know resolve so mental resolve physical flexibility all that is is important but let us choose our battles let us choose what we really want instead of you know this, this is uh, you know there are two ways they they say of doing pranayama you know these br breathing exercises so you have to catch the nose you can catch the nose like this and breathe in and breathe out or there is another pranayama you catch the nose while coming around that is if you are blessed with hands that are as long as lord rama ajanu bahu he was called his his hands when he stood up when he was standing went beyond his knees then he could do like this very easily but for the rest of us that is a very round about way why not just catch the nose straight away why go all the way like this so similarly here wanting things in time wanting things uh, you know that are time bound because when you want things in time and no matter whatever you pursue as an object all that is finite you the, the, the pursuit of anything is finite that is why it is dussankalpa it leads to sorrow because what you really want is the infinite you do not want the finite you are sick of the finite you do you really are sick of the finite why because whatever you get it is drishta nashta swabhava swabhava means its nature is drishta it is as soon as it's seen it is broken it is gone as soon as you look at it it is destroyed it is as good as destroyed even as you are looking at it it they gets destroyed and that is why the results of action are called fruit of action <laughs> karma phala because phala is the key here phala means fruit so you keep a piece of fruit on your counter it looks very nice you keep a banana day one very nice and then you know it can become even an art installation in some museum they had an art installation what did they do they had a blank screen and they taped one banana on it this was supposed to be art you can't even purchase it you can't even take it home you just have to admire that right there and i did really did not know the you know i'm sure it had some kind of a meaning some metaphorical meaning there he taped the banana and every four days the artist used to come and change the banana and to take away the rotten banana and tape the the new banana so this is you know perhaps a, a statement on time or something like that i don't know but by, you know i just remembered this because it was it created a lot of furore in the art world and some people who were serious artists and who were painters and <laughs> fine art they were into fine arts they had actually studied all this a lot they were very upset that this person was getting so much buzz just by taping a banana with that what is that with that masking tape you just tape a banana and then you call yourself an artist so people were quite uh, you know it created a lot of buzz. Um, uh, and then so anyhow back to our banana so day one banana day two oh it looks nice day three now it has got spots and uh, day four the the ba becomes silent and you say na na i don't want it at all <laughs> you, you know because it is it is what rotten same thing you okay, keep peach spring is coming so peach will be there and so summer you know peach and the the, the 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 peach also it is just after and peach is very interesting because you know it just rots from inside and then you try to pick it up only the skin will come out you the skin you the, the whole skin you can uh, you can peel it after uh, four days you can just peel it without the peeler you just take the stalk and the skin also comes out not very appealing okay and then so therefore what so therefore it is called karma phala fruit of action phalgutaya liyate iti phalam 
that which is subject to rotting is the derivative derived meaning of the word fruit fruit means that which subjects to rot which is subject to rotting and so therefore what so karma phala the results of action are also called fruit of action because whatever you generate in terms of action the fruit is finite so the rotten fruits of action you have to then dispose of and then you are still hungry so you have to go and get more fruits and how do you get fruits of action at least the regular fruit you know it's just like the regular fruit you have to first uh, grow the tree you have to first then feed it all kinds of uh, fertilizer then you wait for the fruit first you look at the flower then you wait for the fruit then mango comes and then that's how you enjoy the fruit and the fruit of action actually is no different the fruit of action is also like that first you have to flap 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 there is something frenetic about it and here i am reminded of the humming bird i don't think anybody has seen the humming bird at rest how much it you can't even see the wings how fast it flaps and just like that the jiva also you know just keeps on flapping the wing, wings only difference is humming bird is cute when it does that jiva uncute okay yeah so <laughs> something sad about looking at this all the jiva jiva means the miserable sad jaded faded individual disconnected from everything alienated from everything flapping its wings and trying to make a stir trying to create a stir trying to become famous trying to get what it doesn't have trying to lose what it has and it doesn't want something sad about that that is why it is dus sankalpa wrong priorities wrong priorities and the bhagavad gita talks about these wrong priorities very nicely in the second chapter bhoga and aishwarya these are you know these two things are behind every pursuit what is bhoga gaining eking out enjoyment and aishwarya control over lordship very important just enjoyment is not enough if you tell a person you know just you know take whatever you want have you know you have everything in plenty take whatever you want enjoy it is the person happy not at all because there is this desire to boss over a few people <laughs> to boss over a few people in the family in the workplace you have to have at least one or two people and if you don't have anybody get a dog okay yeah then then at least that desire is somehow fulfilled sit <laughs> even the dog is very clever only if you have a biscuit in hand some treat you know here in india we call it dog biscuit so you have the dog biscuit in hand then the dog looks at your hand and then it will sit roll over same thing if you have something in the hand then it will roll over if you have nothing in the hand it says i don't have to listen to you there is no karma phala here so why should i listen to you it's very opportunistic very very clever much cleverer than you you think you are bossing over the dog but the dog has the final say that's why when you take the dog out for a walk actually it is leading you the dog is in front you are in the back so who is taking who for a walk the overlordship is flipped on its head really so but still that overlordship is is something so dear i want somebody to be able to yell at and they should sit and listen this is the reason to have children i suppose because you you can boss over them you know dog a cat don't keep because cat will not listen at all it will not even make the attempt to listen and uh, you know so that is it will not come when it is called it will not uh, you know fetch when you throw something it will just look at you are you mad why are you throwing this <laughs> so like this you know this overlordship there is a innate need for this it, it appears to be an innate need in the human heart for their for for to boss over somebody something at, you know at some point in time ideally all the time this bossing over is very much desired very much sought after very much needed 
and and this kind of uh, empirical reasons of to boss over you, you know we don't understand why it is there but it is there because of this um, of this uh, inherent idea even without teaching without anybody teaching you you know somehow deep down in your heart what do you know you know that you are you are not meant to listen to people you are the boss somehow you know this you are not accountable to anybody else and that is why vedanta equates this sad jiva wanting some overlordship to the lord which is ishvara then only that human journey is complete it's not about telling a dog to sit that is not where my claim to fame is it is about knowing that i command the whole universe the whole universe is just a projection of me i have projected this entire universe because of my sankalpa it it continues and then when its job is over it resolves into my heart just like my nightly dream my own memory my own desires project the dream world of names and forms in which even i am included i have a form i have a name in the dream world and then what i enjoy the dream world or i am frightened by it in either case then what happens the dream resolves where does it go it goes back unto me my own projection i sustain the dream world and it resolves within that heart from where it ensued and in the same manner this whole jagat is a projection of the lord sustained by the lord lord includes goddess okay yeah. and then uh, goes back to that which is the same as your presence as your consciousness as your awareness non separate from your presence and awareness is the presence of what we call god goddess same thing and that's when this thirst this of our overlordship is ultimately and finally quenched this is what is described in the taittiriya upanishad also in doing all the karmas in uh, trying to gain something in life doing religious karma vaidika karma laukika karma other mundane forms of actions in doing all these actions the results of action makes one feel on top of the world and one gathers a lot of punya merits and then which translate into a wonderful life in the hereafter heaven etc in fact we don't say one heaven we have seven kinds of heaven yeah seven up seven down seven kinds of hell are also there and the the farthest outreach farthest in terms of accessibility okay not in terms of space the farthest outreach of heaven is called brahmaloka a place where you are taught about brahman so this zoom loka itself is brahmaloka because right now you are hearing about brahman effortlessly so how to go to brahmaloka loka is there a gps no there is no gps but there is a there is a method what is the method for about uh, you know uh, 12 hours a day you keep uh, offering fire sacrifices called homa you keep putting ghee think about how expensive it is so you keep getting wood ghee what else you know puffed rice all these things you have to keep offering keep offering keep offering 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 for 12 hours a day oh the rest of the time i sleep no the rest of the time you meditate you do japa this is called gnana karma samuchchaya gnana here means meditation so the the uh, the effect of this two fold kind of methods 
uh, meditation and worship physicalized worship upasana and worship meditation and worship leads you to the farthest outreach of heaven there also it is not permanent if you gain brahma vidya if you know the truth of yourself if you attend if you are a good boy and a good girl and you go and attend all the classes and then yes you could be redeemed but then otherwise you come back a brahma bhuvanal lokat punarav varti norjuna bhagavad gita in the 8th chapter says even if you go up to brahma loka through all the efforts frantic efforts the flap 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 flapping your wings flapping your hands and legs you go even to brahma loka a brahma bhuvanat loka even up to brahma loka you know it is finite the results of action are always finite because the action itself is finite finite produces finite finite can never produce the infinite because the infinite being you it's not an object it's not a product it's not something that is generated all that you can generate is some wind <laughs> and then what only to become winded and want some peace you can generate some wind in the form of going to brahma loka what will you do there you will study upanishad and perhaps when you go there brahma ji the, the 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 one who is in charge the presiding deity of brahma loka is teaching shata shloki then even sitting in front of brahma ji you must get depressed you will get little depressed you will say oh without doing all that homa and all that meditation i was getting it for free in fact it was just once a week the rest of the time i could i could be free so so this is this is the irony of it all the effort that is put to even to go to the farthest reaches of heaven which is which is still in samsara whereas maam upetya tu kaunte ya punar janma na vidyate maam upetya gaining me as the truth of yourself lord krishna says in the bhagavad gita there is no rebirth there is no pain there is no more sorrow that is that overlordship that overlordship is that need for that uh, to 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 be a boss which is manifest in the everyday level to be a boss the the satisfaction of some people listening to you is so great why why is there such a premium because there is an inherent understanding somewhere deep down even without being taught vedanta that i am the whole i am limitless nobody is there to order me around nobody is there and so this is wonderful this is uh, you know excellent this is fantastic and so what does this mean this means that we have a uh, we have a very interesting uh, uh, situation is that you can strive for overlordship aishwarya you can, uh, aishwarya is overlordship why ishwarasya bhavam aishwaryam ishwara ness is called aishwarya that's why it is translated as overlordship be you know nobody wants to be lorded everybody wants to be one with that which gives commands so this aishwarya the struggle to get this aishwarya in the everyday is in indeed a dus sankalpa it is born to fail why is it born to fail because <laughs> what else will happen it's finite you can force people to listen to you why because you are paying their salary maybe you are an employer you are paying their salary so out of fear people will listen to you how long not very long they may even stage a revolt and go on strike then who is left holding the bag you <laughs> they have become the overlords because then you have to enter into negotiations with the people and say okay what do you want come back come back what do you want okay i can't give that much but i can give this much so now who is the overlord same thing in in every relationship 
the the desire to express oneself and be listened to and you know have that command is only temporary and sometimes people like to gain overlordship by mastering various bodies of knowledge getting one phd after another that also is temporary all that is needed is one more phd to come and what is that new phd the new phd is refuting your phd thesis finished <laughs> then <laughs> sorrow ensues and so uncertain is the perch of the conqueror somebody said something like that uncertain is the perch because the branch can break and so therefore the the pursuit of the finite in order to get aishwarya in order to feel like ishvara it, it's not going to work it's just an ersatz feeling it's just all false it's a masquerade why do you want to strive to feel like ishvara when you're already ishvara isn't it easier to know it why why do you want to feel like ishvara there is nothing to feel like ishvara i want to be you know i want to wear the hat of ishvara for a few minutes why when that hat when that crown belongs to you when the whole glory of the universe is yours why do you settle for all these things this is why it is called dus sankalpa a wrong priority bhogaishvarya prasaktanam taya pahrita chetasam vyavasayatmika buddhi samadhau na vidhiyate the lord finishes this discussion of bhoga enjoyment and aishvarya the desire for overlordship he makes short shrift of it in the bhagavad gita beautifully bhogai bhogai bhogaishvaryaihi prasaktana prasakta means completely um, addicted for the ones who are addicted to overlordship and enjoyment in this life and frenetically they are working for this and in fact they are not just addicted to it lord krishna says they are uh, what is that called apahrita chetasam meaning they are abducted by it they have given their heart to it they are carried away by it they have no control other than to produce some bossiness and produce some kind of a enjoyment they are addicted to this in fact it's not uh, no longer in their control they are controlled by it and so for such people lord krishna says vyavasayatmika buddhi vyavasayatmika buddhi means the ability to pursue the correct priorities the the the, the ability to have susankalpa proper priorities navidhi samadhau navidhiyate and that peace of mind etc is the tranquility is not available for the ones who have become a slave to overlordship what an interesting dichotomy what an interesting i irony i want to be the overlord of all therefore what i am addicted to over i have become a slave to this so in, in, instead of being the lord one is the slave so one has become a slave to this aishwarya wanting to be like ishvara ishvara wanna be and who is this ishvara wanna be the misled jeeva is ishvara wanna be but you are already ishvara you are ishvara already and so isn't it easier to just understand this through the study of vedanta rather than to manufacture something which is ishvara which you already are it's like you know the king in a king kingdom wanted to dress up as a king for halloween what's the you know then what's the meaning of it dress up as himself and so without knowing that because he thought oh i'll feel like a king if i dress up like a king but you're already the king so the overlordship that comes from actions is finite you may feel like on the top of the world apno tiswara ajyam apno timana saspatim vakpatish chakshushpati chakshurpati shrotrapatir vijnanapati ye tattato bhavati this is what the taitriya upanishad describes the one who is adept in who is a devout person 
a, a very religious person and a devotee through the dint of their actions and through the dint of their uh, you know uh, dedication and commitment to religious actions and forms of worship they have gained a kind of a semblance of overlordship called swarajya they may even have gained some siddhis what are siddhis the ability to uh, what is that all the everything that starts with telly telepathy telekinesis telly this telly that so the ability to to command the world with your mind and to uh, to move objects to command the weather all these kinds of things are there small small siddhis and if you if you waste your buddhi on getting the siddhi then it's a terrible waste really why because the siddhis are also finite they come and they go they have and what is the one what is it that made you have these powers these powers to do miracles etc what is it that made you have action so the same action has to be keep kept on repeated to keep the siddhis going to keep the powder dry same action so you do a homa so that everybody will listen to you and then you chant a mantra vasham anaya swaha sarva janam me vasham anaya swaha gadapati mantra like that sarva janam all the people vasham me anaya please bring them under my control what a waste of a prayer but this is how people want this is what people want everybody should listen to me i should shine and i should have some kind of tejas and varchas and some kind of radiance and i should have charisma this is a homa for charisma okay <laughs> and so then this homa for charisma how long does it last as long as you know the karma lasts karma phala is like the fruit kept on the table or taped on to a canvas and it is going to drop off it is going to it is going to finish and then what do one more homa and homa and homa much easier it is to understand that you are you know you don't need charisma all you need is ma ma in sanskrit means knowledge all you need is prama well ascertained knowledge you don't need charisma that ma itself gives you charisma because the people who have self knowledge have the ability to attract because they 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 are naturally attractive no matter how you know what they may look like they are naturally attractive because brahma vidya attracts this knowledge attracts that's what it is so you don't need all these homa and all these things up notice varajyam you get the ability to control the forces you get the ability to go to brahma loka after death what for and then what up noti manasaspatim so you 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 can read the minds of people big deal vakpatihi chakshishpatihi patihi vijnana patihi so you know you, you you become the master of speech and you become a scholar in this that or the other it is of no use because you still remain a flapping sad bird <laughs> grounded bird or at least the bird is more intelligent the jiva doesn't have it doesn't know how to go with the flow that air current is ishvara's flow it doesn't know how to ride the flow it separates itself and keeps flapping and generating a little bit of air little bit of warmth and then getting tired repeatedly therefore dus sankalpa so dus sankalpaihi because of these dus sankalpas and vikalpaihi vikalpaihi means cannot even make up the mind can't even pursue one thing properly pursues half of this half of that half of this half of that all the time spread too thin nothing comes to fruition everything is cut 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 truncated dus sankalpaihi vikalpaihi then what is happening gya yeah. vishayam anu vishayam anu anu means going after vishayam in keeping with the vishaya uh, meaning completely sold and enslaved by the various vishayas then what kadarthi kritam chittam etat 
अहो सो सैड वाई कदर थी कृतम कदर थी कृतम मीन्स दुष्कृतम मीनिंग चित्तम मीन्स दी दी माइंड द माइंड द हार्ट दी फीलिंग्स एमोशंस एट्सेट्रा चित्तम हियर कदर थी कृतम द होल माइंड हैज बीन करप्टेड करप्ट द माइंड थ्रू the pursuit of wrong priorities through the pursuit of wrong intentions corrupts the mind enslaves the mind to just try to pursue everything in you know in small amounts in finite ways khinnam khinnam bhavati we have to add khinnam means becomes extremely sad khid kheda all this comes from the root verb khid khid to grieve to be sorrowful and then khinnam past passive participle becomes khinna becomes sorrowful is sorrowful miserable attracts misery because the whole mind is corrupted there is no place to pursue the truth of the self there is no place for self enquiry there is no place to just sit and enjoy the self there is no place to allow one self the trust to ride with the wind and let the wind take me wherever it goes no i have to keep working i don't trust ishwara but i want to be like ishwara this is what is called jeeva srishti but very beautifully described here ishwara srishti is the air that is already there and all that the jeeva has to do is catch the air like the bird and the bird does this without any uh, you know without any knowledge of without being schooled in geography or any form of engineering but then here the the person <laughs> is worse off because unlike the bird can't even catch the drift of ishwara's intent of the total can't connect to the total because after soaring for some time you should be able to after flapping for some time you should be able to be in the flow but here the more the jeeva flaps the wings the more away the more away from the flow the flow of this life who's you know just like the river meeting the ocean the, the whose purpose is to understand that oneness with god with ishvara that's what it is so one keeps going away from the floor uh, the fr- from the flow and therefore khinna khinna means what is that sorrowful miserable not knowing how to come out of the misery flaps again even more like a trapped bird in a net and what is the net the net of dussankalpa dussankalpa vikalpaihi jalaihi so by the nets of dussankalpa trapped in the net is the bird in its own net net of wrong priorities khinnam yati gains you know uh, enters misery and then what what does it do vishram hetu ho in order to gain some some ability to 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 rest from this it is sad it is exhausted too much flapping not enough karma phala and where is ishvara in all this where is overlordship nothing is gained and sad it what what does it do swapiti chiram swapiti chiram finally goes to sleep for a long time <laughs> hastapadan prasarya <laughs> giving up its hands and legs and in the sleep it is one with ishvara it learns to soar with ishvara in the waking state it complains so much there is too much of oneself too little ishvara therefore the pray the prayer of every seeker must be uh, oh lord oh goddess let there be more of you and less of me in me that should be the prayer of every seeker take me lead me let me understand that the truth of me is you alone so like everything in vedanta uh, there is a paradox overlordship comes from surrender overlordship comes from surrender 
first you surrender you go with the flow and when you go with the flow often enough you become the flow you are already the flow you recognize yourself as the flow more we will see next week om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम